Shalom. We give all praise and honor and glory to you. How about you, man? Shall we give double honors to the elders and the apostles of great millstone? Peace and shalom to you. The light is pushing up this word throughout the four corners of the globe. Shalom to you. Hope you're in good spirits. Is your brother Shaman Moff from the D.C. camp. Um, I did a search on these uh, on these words and I wanted to build a lesson upon it. Um, receive a reward and just came to my mind, um, you know, doing the work, um, believing in a believing in the faith, believing in Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus and his uh, and the heavenly father, Yahweh, in the ancient Hebrew languages. Um, was thinking about this, this work that we do, this belief that we have, um, the belief that we believe in. And first thing came to my mind is receive a reward because when you do something, when you work for something, um, you know, you expect s some type of, uh, you know, gain for believing and, ho and holding your faith, holding, uh, you know, the, the, the doctrine and what you believe um, has merit and has as a reward and and this is uh this is what i came to i just did the search it said receive a reward and it was three scriptures that came up as you can see right three scriptures that came up and which is uh matthew 10 41 first corinthians 3 and 14 and second john 1 and 8 matthew 10 and 41 says he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. So the prophets receive a reward and you will receive a, a, a prophet for receiving that prophet. It says, and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So a reward comes to those who receive a prophet and receive a righteous man. So you doing something, you working for, working at something you believe in something and therefore a reward is due um however it may come you know um it may come uh many different ways of uh, strengthening your faith you may receive money you may receive clothes you may receive food whatever the case is you may re receive a revelation you may receive a spot You may receive a spot in in, in a man's kingdom, uh, you know. So you know the things that you work at and work for and believe in, and this is why you work for it. Um, there is a, a reward for doing the things that you do. First uh, uh, Corinthians three and fourteen it says, "If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward." Plain and simple, you know, straight to the point. Second uh, John one and eight. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which you have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And this is this is what brought me um, to the lesson um, after receiving this, and I built a lesson upon you know the things that I've heard and read and saw, seen and believe, and I come to this. Um, I come to this uh, this lesson. Uh, a penny a day for each laborer, um, because this is this is all that the righteous, this is all that uh, the inheritance of the elect will receive. Uh, receive a penny, and, and a penny is not a monetary value. A penny is just your reward. It's just the reward that you receive. It's just a a figurative um, a statement or a, a, a figurative an amount. Of what you receive because everyone receives just one penny for their work for their belief in Yahweh Shai, the belief in Yahweh, the, the hope that they have in the salvation of his word. And we all receive just one penny. So your penny is not greater than my penny and in terms of reward, but there's an order in which you know the men of Israel would be in in the kingdom of heaven uh, which is different everyone receives a penny the hundred and forty four thousand and one third the penny is actual is, is really salvation 
This is what you, you, you this is what the penny represents. It represents salvation and not destruction. Okay, and everyone receives a penny who's slotted to receive the penny. Matthew 7 and 13, 34 says, All these things spake Yahweh Shai because Jesus is not his name. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one who died on a, on a cross for the nation of Israel. He spake Yahweh Shai unto the multitude in parables because without a parable spake he not unto them. Yahweh Shai never spoke just regular plain to the to the multitude he always spoke in parables because it was prophesied that he would speak to the people in parables so some who are not slotted for uh, salvation to receive that penny they won't understand and those who understand his parables because they were either uh, revealed to them by revelation or by him himself through the Holy Spirit would receive that penny because they would get the understanding of what they need to do and what they need to labor for to receive that penny. Matthew 13 and 13, it says, Therefore, speak I to them in parables because they see not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. You see, this is why he did this. This is why it was a prophesied that he would speak to the people in parables and in them is fulfilled of the prophecy of Isaiah. See, Isaiah uh, foretold a prophecy that the, the Messiah was speaking prophecy, uh, speaking of parables. It says, which saith by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand and seeing shall you shall see and shall not perceive for the people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their ears they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. And that prophecy goes back to Isaiah 6 and 9 through 10 and Ezekiel 12 and 2. So it was spoken twice about how the Lord, Yahweh the Messiah, would speak to the people in parables and those who were slotted for understanding, the understanding will be opened up to them. And those who didn't, didn't receive the understanding of his words through his parables. And a parable is a dark saying. It's a saying which may be um, kind of, it's, it's, it's saying spiritual things in carnal senses um, or um, a, a way in which, you know, I would tell you a story but not really actually tell you a story or give you the clues for the hidden meaning because the hidden meaning is a spiritual thing and the spirit must be opened up to the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh for you to understand. So it becomes a dark sentence or a dark riddle or a dark saying. This is what is meant by parable. Matthew 20 and one, it says, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers. This is a parable. The Yahweh Shai is speaking to them spiritual meanings or spiritual things in a layman's kind of way. But it's a dark understanding when you, when you, when you understand it in the spiritual deeper sense. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man as a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyard. Now, the laborer is the one who works for hire, right? You just hired to do the work. And this is what the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, sent the people out to tell the other people, maybe in riddles, maybe in uh, parables, maybe in dark sayings, sometimes it could be harsh and brass to some, and maybe it's real plain and easy for people to understand. But he sent them out, sent us out, right, as hired laborers. And this is the point of the, this is the point of the lesson that the the hired laborers, what what you know, they were going to receive a penny, 
So what is the reward? A penny. What is the penny represent? The understanding of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh the dark sayings, the riddles, the understandings of the parables to the people. And if you can understand the parables and get the deeper meaning, you can understand the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Very, very simple, very plain. Matthew 10 and 5, right? It says, these 12 Jesus sent forth, Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, go not in the way to the Gentiles or and into, and into any city of the Samaritans and to unite. So he commanded them. He commanded his laborers, which was the 12, to go out, do the work in the vineyard. And the vineyard is, is Israel because he is the true vine. Remember that John 15. Start at the top. John 15 and, and 1 says he is the vineyard. He is the true vine. Remember? So it says, go not in the way of the Gentiles or into any city of the Samaritans and to you not, but rather, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, say the kingdom of heaven, right? The kingdom of heaven is like a man that has a household or a householder. And every morning he hired laborers to go out. So the kingdom of heaven is the same way. And when you preach to the people about being laborers, right, to go out, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is your hire. This is what you were tasked to do. Okay. It says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely have you received, freely give. So your hire right? No charge. You don't charge the people for cleaning the leper and waking up the dead or, or giving knowledge of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to them. That's not, you, you don't charge people. Freely have you received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staffs, for the workman is worthy of his meat. The workman is worthy of his hire. The things that you do, the work that you put in, the rot that you did, which means labor, the work that you did speaks for itself. This is why those who are slotted to receive the penny would receive the penny. Galatians 6 and 7 says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto them or unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. Yahweh is not mocked for whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is the, the reward for your labor. The things you put in, the work that you put in, is you going to get out. But everyone receives a penny. You don't get no more. You don't get no less. If this is your reward, Matthew, back in Matthew 20, starting at verse three, it says he went out about the third hour and he saw others standing idle. So there are some people who were hired and sent out, but they standing around doing nothing. They just standing around. It says in the marketplace and said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard and whatever or whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about, so this is happening over and over again. As time is passing, these people, these laborers that were hired, is still standing around, still doing uh, idle. They being idle. But let's read on because it says, and about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? And they said unto him, because no man hired us. Like no one's watching my videos. I'm not getting a bunch of hits. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a really a great speaker. Whatever your, your issue is, with why a man is not hiring you, so what? So what? 
Remember, your words of Yahweh Shimei Shai that you speak don't go out void, and it carries upon the wind. Yahweh Shimei Shai and the angels know what you what you are doing. There's no need for uh, glorification or upliftment because you're just a hired servant. You just have one job. Go out and preach. That's all you have to do. This is all that's required of you. This was your hire. You agreed to it. You agreed that you will receive a penny for going out and preach his word. Find a lost sheep. T teach them about the kingdom of heaven. Tell them about Yahweh Shai and what he'd done for the nation of Israel. This is all you have to do. You see? It says, but no man hired us. He said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right that you shall receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his stewards, call the laborers, call the people back. The end, the day, the, the end of the day is here. Remember, you went through all the hours of the day. Sometime you were sitting around, sometime you were not. But the point is that now you're being called in and give them their hire beginning from the last unto the first. Now, this is this is really interesting because people will say, well, I did a whole bunch of work and I've been out there 60 years. Or I've been out there 10 years. I've been out there two years. I've been out there two months. The, the last is going to be called up first. And it says, but when the first came, um, it says, um, uh, Salat, call in the laborers and give them the high beginning from the last unto the first. And when they come, they were hired about the 11th hour. They received every man a penny, even the ones that came in last or the went out last received the penny. It says, but when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. Well, why do you think you received more um, than what you were were, were, that you agreed to. It says, receive every man a penny, right? And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. They murmured against the good man, saying, these last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burdens and heat of the day. We've been out there a long time. We've been out there all day. Why, you know, why I'm only getting a penny? We've been doing the work for 60 years. We've been doing the, ten, the work. For, you can't murmur against what you were hired to do. You just a contractor. You get what you agreed and signed up for. It says, but he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Did thou, did not thou agree f with me for a penny? Yes, you agreed for that one penny to do the work. Don't murmur against those who only was out there one hour or five months or six years or 20 or 50 years. You can't murmur because you was hired all the same. What one man's contract is and the, and the time spent uh, to, do the, to do the labor, that's between him and the contractor. That's between the most high and the contractor or the laborer that was hired to do his job. So what he came in the 11th hour? So what this this man was, uh, you you was doing more work than the, than the one that came in and for just one hour. That's not up to you. This is the Lord's hire. This is the Lord's employment. First Timothy 5 and 17, it says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For remember, you may be two months in, you may be five months in, you become an elder to the ones underneath you. And the ones that's underneath you could be an elder over you. So they worthy of double honor. Why? Because they put in the work because the Lord had put them in these positions. It's not you to put them in this position or nor you that employed them. You see, it says for the scripture said, thou shall not muzzle an ox that treadeth out the corn and the laborer 
is worthy of his hire. So what does that mean? We've been going over this the whole, the last 20 minutes that the labor is worthy of his hire as long as he's doing the work and he shouldn't muzzle the one who's doing his work the way the Lord had made him work or the task to do. Some do more, some do less, but we all receive a penny. Some may do little, some may do a whole lot. You can't fault the man who's doing less because he's doing less. You have to fault no one because we all receive the, the, the penny. We all receive what the Lord had tasked us to do. Some he tasked above and some he tasked below. See, the order is the order in which we fall in the kingdom is unknown right now. Right. And you and you can't just do so much in thinking you're going to get a greater seat in the kingdom. Well, th that will come in its time. We will understand who's who in the kingdom and the, and the lot we fall in. You see, but right now it's only strive to do the work of the Lord. Yahweh Shai, and just do the labor. Go out there and preach. Go out there and tell somebody. Go out there and, and find the lost sheep and tell them that they're lost. This is the task at hand right now. Don't worry about the things that we have no 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 knowledge of. That will come in the kingdom. First Corinthians, I believe this first Corinthians nine and nine, it says, For it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Do Yahweh take care for oxen? Yes. Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written. He that put the he that ploweth should plow in hope. This is the, right now, man. Hope that you would be given the penny. Hope that you would receive that penny. This is all we need to worry about now. What what position we have, you know, later on. That, that's not for us to worry right now. This is not of us to even think of right now. Just do the job that's the task that's at hand. It says. It says, it is for it is written that he that ploweth should plow in hope and that he that threadish in hope should be partakers of his hope. This is the only thing we need to be worrying about. This is the only thing that we should be caring for. We should care for the hope, which is mercy and salvation in the kingdom of heaven, to get to the kingdom of heaven without being destroyed here in America when America is destroyed soon come or be taken by a virus. The task that is at hand is to do the work of the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai's word and his doctrine preach to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. With that, I say Shalom.